Good evening. It is Wednesday, August the 5th, about 3 o'clock p.m. This is meteorologist Shay Gibson with Leading Edge Weather, bringing you a forecast for the Savannah Cup Race 2020 starting this Friday, 4 o'clock p.m. at the CYC starting line. Let's go ahead and make me smaller out of the picture. I want to give you the, um, the website here for Cora, the Coastal Offshore Racing Association, is hosting this event. And this race will start Friday night and go overnight into Saturday morning and into Savannah, just off of Tybee, at, uh, at the marker out there. So the here on the website you can go to the skipper's information for offshore wind and weather and this is where the forecasts are going to be. This is the one I put the preliminary forecast I posted Monday night for this event. But if you go back to home and you go to um, down to the race, the sailing instructions are here for the Savannah Cup. There will be a skipper's meeting tomorrow at 6 o'clock p.m. at the Yacht Club. I'm planning on coming on Zoom. I'm on staycation from Boeing this week. I have my kids so I'll be on there, I'll be giving a forecast, whether it be in person or in Zoom, most likely Zoom. I'll get with Charlie Lint about that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the surface map. What's going on in the area? Not much has changed since Monday, so it looks like it's a pretty consistent forecast the last couple of days. Waiting to see if anything changes by tomorrow, tomorrow night, or even Friday morning ahead of the forecast. But here's what we're looking at Friday morning, and this is about 8 o'clock a.m. As we go uh, forward into time, we look through the afternoon. And what happens, uh, when we get this far out, the map really kind of jumps about, uh, you know, 24 hours. So once we get a little closer in, within a couple of days, we'll start getting the, this map will update every six hours. But right now we have this front that's sort of lingering upstate South Carolina and across up through the Mid-Atlantic. This front will continue to sort of stay inland of the Charleston area, which is good for us because it'll keep a, a southerly flow going. At least it'll keep some consistency in those southerly winds rather than laying over the area and making complications looks like Atlantic high pressure out in the Atlantic will, will keep that southerly flow going and we'll keep that uh, forecast intact. So as we get into Saturday morning, the front lies just to our north, just north of Georgetown over across uh, maybe Litchfield or so. High pressure to the north is going to try to drive this down while high, high pressure of the Atlantic will keep it going up. It gets caught in the middle. I do think uh, from what the latest forecasts have been saying the last 48 hours, that there's just enough of that southerly wind or that opposing Atlantic high pressure to keep that front just to the north of us over uh, at least the Winyah Bay to Litchfield area. As we get into Sunday, we see the front still lingering just inland and just to our north as well, while high pressure really tries to keep nudging that front a little further offshore of southern North Carolina. It just holds to our north for the forecast. We're waiting to see if that's going to verify. I think it will. In fact, the Weather Service is calling for that Friday and Saturday as well. <clears throat> if we look at the GFS model, this is going out 72 hours. Let's take a look. Uh, let's go back a little bit to Friday morning. Again, we see the southerly flow, this Atlantic high pressure. It looks like it's nearing Bahama, so it's almost more of a Bahamian high pressure than it would be a Bermuda high pressure. But either way, we'll just call it Atlantic high pressure for all intents and purposes. We go out a little further in time. Here's Friday uh, early afternoon. And as we get into the night, this is in, in the evening, we see the flow still from the south. So we're looking at south to south, southeast flow pretty much as this lobe of high pressure continues to spin out here in the Atlantic and keep that flow going. It does keep the north to the front. The wind barbs line up about 10 knots. Now we could see 15 knots in the afternoon during peak sea breeze in late afternoon to evening time. We may get a little bit of a, a nocturnal jet starting in the evening hours that may push it towards the moderate values towards 15 knots. And the Weather Service does reference that in some of their numbers. So we may have a little bit of jetting for some mid, maybe upper teens at nighttime maybe late afternoon and then again mid, in, the, in the evening and night, uh, overnight, and then calming down at some point after one or two in the morning. That's usually how it works. And then kind of getting back into the modest flow as the morning on Saturday begins. So let's take a look at the weather service, what they're calling for right now. This is as of 1.51 p.m. today, which is why I wanted to go ahead and do the update at 3 o'clock versus later because they're kind of seeing the same thing. So see Friday, southwest winds. They're calling for a little bit more of a sea breeze for southwest winds. Uh, to be a little bit more offshore. So we go like GFS and we look, the further offshore you get, the more southwesterly the wind could go. However, I'm seeing the trends more of a south wind. Either way, I think um, it's going to matter on the direction because southwest is going to be a direct headwind along that uh, rum line. So that's the only concern I have is that if the winds are southwest, but I'm seeing more of a southerly wind. So it gives you a little more angle to do a longer, to longer tax upwind, downwind, um, to, to be able to get down around down that rum line faster. So uh, Friday night south winds, they are lining up from the south, 10 to 15 knots, diminishing 5 to 10 after midnight. So again, uh, they keep that nocturnal jetting going at least through midnight and then fading out after that. Chance of showers and storms each day 
simply because the proximity of that cold front or that meandering front just inland uh, will keep a little bit of moisture going along it. So there's a chance for thunderstorms to fire off. We're not seeing anything of significant value, nothing of severe value at this point. You may just have a few showers with some uh, and hear a few rumbles. It depends on how far you are offshore. The closer you are closer to shore, maybe more storms versus offshore. If you're beyond 20, maybe 20 to 30 nautical miles out, you may not see as much activity. So Saturday, south winds 5 to 10 knots are calm for a little lighter wind, although the models are, are sort of bringing that up a little bit. Let's go ahead and take a look at the forecast, uh, at least for the Charleston area. Uh, leaving out from the Fort Sumter Front Range Light, we'll just call it from there. We'll get a free forecast out. Uh, looking at sail flow here, let's take a look in the afternoon. They're calling for about 10 to 11 knots from the south, south, southwest, or south by west down here um, uh, around 4 or 5 o'clock p.m., 10 to 11 knots, and then petering off at nighttime. Now, this, this is a blended outlook, so at this point it does shift to the, the NAM 12 and then the GFS, so maybe somewhere in between. We may see this sort of change a little bit. Uh, but just to get out of here, I would say 10, anywhere from 10 to 14 knots to leave the harbor at that particular time. Is a, is a pretty valid call. Now, as we get into Saturday overnight, looks like, um, and this is also along the coastline, so we're going to shift offshore. I'm just going to pick capers near shore uh, since this is a little bit of an offshore valley. It's a little bit to our north, not quite along that track, but at least it's a buoy that um, serves some purpose there for a reading for that time zone. And it looks like a little bit stronger, about 10 to 12 knots with some jetting overnight, getting up near the mid teens and some showers. Now that's a little bit to the north. Let's look to the south. That's closer to the boundary. So I'm going to look to the south along the Fripp nearshore buoy. And I know everybody here can do this. They can look at these forecasts and kind of gain these values. But I want to give you a little bit of insight. Uh, the further south you go away from that boundary is the less likelihood for storms and showers. So just letting you know um, that may be something you, don't, you won't have to compete with as much. And Friday afternoon and tonight, it looks like things are a little bit stronger down there. So also, again, a little bit further away you get from that boundary to the south, the stronger the wind field will get up to a certain point where the gradient lets loose, but at least within about, it's hard to pin down, maybe 40 to 50 miles away from that boundary is where you get that stronger that stronger jetting going on, just because it's, even if it's a weak front, you still get a little bit of a, a mid-level jet that settles down to the surface. Even if it's 25 knots, it's just enough to push down. Now overnight Friday night, you can see here at 3, 4 a.m., things really pick up, so there's that potential again for those mid to upper teens overnight. Uh, this this forecast calls for going through 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning before phasing out. And also, look at that west, that southwesterly tilt during the nocturnal phasing as well. That is very typical of nocturnal jetting because it's a difference in wind from the mid-levels coming down to the surface and it actually steers that wind back to the southwest. So that's the Fripp near shore. Now we get a little further out. Now this is 50 miles, so can't really go by this, but just showing you that there's a little bit more wind further offshore, at least at the Fripp, shore, Fripp near shore buoy. Let's go out to Friday for here. It looks like at about 50 miles out, things kind of uh, get, get back down, not quite as strong, maybe a little bit more shower activity uh, related to some of that uh, feed off the Gulf Stream pretty far out. Again, you'll be sailing south of this area. So uh, anywhere south of the Capers near shore and the Charleston Edisto buoy, as you get further away from that boundary, the less chance for the shower activity, and that will be a help. So hopefully that um, helps paint a picture for everybody here. I think that's... Um, that's about all we can say for right now is we're looking at about 10 to 14 knots to start from the south or south-southwest. Um, I'd be surprised to see southwest, full southwest tilt, unless that, that cold front drops down sooner, which may turn the wind field. Uh, but we'll call for that at the start, we'll go from there. I'll call the weather service tomorrow before our skipper's meeting to verify that there's no severe threat over the area at the start or overnight into Saturday morning. It looks like the southerlies will continue all the way through Saturday as well. In fact, I'll go ahead and pin this since uh, most folks will be coming back Saturday. Maybe most folks will come back Saturday and we go again southerly winds. So it looks like a pretty decent day out there. Now the swell heights, swell heights look like they're going to be about two to three feet for the most part widely. Even um, 20 to 30 miles offshore make it about three to 3.5 feet. The um, seconds, the periods will be about 10 seconds for each of those. If we look at the NWPS, let me stop it right there, try to go back a little bit. Going from seven. Eight and it looks like about two, maybe 2.5 feet that far offshore. Where if you want to go out and chase the wind a little bit, you know, 20 30 miles out, uh, and then you'll have a little bit more swell to deal with out there. A little closer in, you have about a half a foot to maybe a foot less, and so that that could be 
significant in, in what your plan is because if you have a cross chop, you have a southerly wind cutting across a south and e southeast or east southeast swell. Uh, it gets a little bit bumpy out there. Even at 10 seconds, it could get a little bit bumpy. Ideally, you'd like to see about 12 to 14 seconds on that period. Also, the tide will be going out as you start the race. So let's go back. I want to just make sure what time the, the low tide is. Go into the French Quarter, which is the official tide gauge. And it looks like as we go Friday, the low tide is at 523. So if you start at 4 o'clock, you'll have an hour and 23 minutes to get out of the harbor on the outgoing tide. So hopefully that's enough time for everyone to get out and around the, the jetty marker and start your run blind down to the south and end up all the way down here just off of Tybee Island. All right, folks, well, that, that'll do it for now. I'll see everybody at the Skipper's Mean tomorrow. If anything changes drastically with this forecast, I'll update it as well before then and then also report out tomorrow at the meeting. Until then, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you then.